Okay, so we have that function now, and again, just to re re reiterate, we know that one is equal to this integral now, rho of x dx. And given what we have just written now, we can rewrite, or we can rethink this as if you add up all the possible different measurable outcomes, you're guaranteed that one of them will occur. That, again, this is the normalization condi the condition. Um, and by the way, this is actually one of the most useful equations in all of probability theory, because as you guys know, whenever you see anything, you can always multiply it by one. So there, this, this takes like, it just appears out of nowhere so often in probability theory because it's, you, if you ever want to like throw something inside an integral, you just multiply it by one and then you just put it inside this integrand there and you can do magic like that. So it's a super useful, useful thing to like just try if you're, if you're stuck doing some sort of like probability question. So there's one thing that is just a, a tool for us to have. The second thing, we know that if you want to take the expectation value of, 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 well, of x, or specifically in this case, it is the likely, sorry, the most likely position that you will find that b at, if you will. All you, given a distribution that you already know. All you have to do here, it's almost precisely the same as that summation notation. That's a cool name for a band, by the way, the summation notation. I just, that. Yeah. Anyway, um, so instead of the sum of x, p of x, we're just going to integrate. The integral across all possible values of x, rho of x, dx. Easy enough. And again, it's understood that this function can never be negative, and no matter what x is, as long as rho of x converges, it's guaranteed that this is going to converge to a finite value. Uh, I, I, I would like for I would like for you to prove that to me, <laughs> um, but I'm rather sure that has to be true. Uh, I can't quite think of what the anyway. So um, and that's going to be true for any other expectation value. If you want to take the expectation value of x squared, you just square that. So for any function defined on our variable there, the expectation value of that function is, as I described last time, it's really the moment of that function there, f of x, rho of x, dx. And then we can, the, the last main thing that we came across last time, the variance, which was sigma squared, is given by I, I tend to get this wrong, so I did actually write down. The expectation value of x squared minus the expectation value of x squared. <laughs> I guess the faster you say it, that implies where the brackets are placed. Um, so that's the variance, and so the standard deviation, you just take the square root of both sides. So really, th this is the, the more kind of fundamental thing, and it's rare that in most questions you would really need to do that. If you do, you just calculate that and you just hit square root in your calculator. So, I mean, at this point here, we really have all the mathematical machinery that we need. And hey, I'm gonna get rid of it, just because that's really kind of, there's no need to write both of those things. Um, so for everything that we're gonna do now, based on the Schrodinger equation, this is really the, the statistical analysis that's required of us. And for most well-behaved functions, these integrals may not be fun, but they are doable. And th there may be times when it might have to be like, for example, numerically um, calculated. But at the least though, as long as that row function meets the definition that we've already laid out, and as long as this function is a meaningful, signif uh, a significant, no, uh, a meaningful or, or, or useful, interesting thing to ask, it's guaranteed this will give us out a, a good result. Um, it wouldn't make sense to like take the uh, expectation value of the function zero. Oh, by the way, that was one other thing at, at when I wrote these first three uh, conditions. The other thing that row of x can't be is zero everywhere because that's just, it's dumb. But you would never come across that in real life. So, so this is where we're at here. 
we now have a, um, a mathematical framework to be able to integrate to get statistical quantities about th that can predict some sort of physically meaningful thing. And what we're going to find is that this probability density rho is going to be directly linked to some function that we're going to call psi, or specifically psi of x and t. I'm not going to go any further than this other than to say that this is the function that we will find in the Schrodinger equation. And it's not going to be a one-for-one one change. There's going to be something that we're going to have to do with it to make it behave properly like a uh, probability density function. So let's introduce the Schrodinger equation and then just leave it at that without explaining it.